Hey everybody, uh, making a video on functions, linear versus nonlinear, writing equations from graphs, as well as uh, writing uh, equations and rules from tables. Uh, start off here, we're talking about functions, and what we have here with functions is think of your pop machine. Every input can only have one output. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to work through several examples here, talk about why it's a function, why it's not a function, and go from there. So I'm going to start up here on the top row with the first one here. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking at my inputs, my domain. All right, domain is an input. And my output is all my range. So essentially, if you want to think of it as your x and your y. So when you're looking for functions, you're really not worried about the range. You're looking at the domain. So I'm going to be looking to see if any of those x values are repeated. And 10, negative 2, negative 6, 5, 8, negative 1. So there's no repeated x values. So this one is a function. So that's yes, function. Uh, going over to the table on the far right, looking for repeated x values. And there is a pair. There's a 9 here and a 9 here. So, but they have two different outputs. So that means no, not a function. Um, and we got this vertical line test. So all we're going to do is we're going to drag that vertical line across my screen, and I'm looking to see if I hit more than once anywhere. So like this is good, there's only one hit. But when I hit right here, I hit more than one place. Because I hit more than one place, that is not a function, no function. All right, same thing on this last graph. I'm gonna do that same vertical line, drag it still across, and you can see pretty quickly that it's hitting more than one place, not a function again, no function. So remember, every input can only have one output. Uh, now we're looking at linear versus nonlinear. So don't get these two things confused. Linear means the same rate of change, same path, same everything the entire time. Nonlinear means it's doing something at a different rate. So I'm going to do one table with you, one graph, one equation, and then you can pause the video and try to figure out the rest, and then I'll tell you which ones it is. All right? So starting off up here at the top, this first one. I start to do my rates of change. Now, when you're doing this, you got to do them all. So this is five. Here we have seven. We have five again. Excuse me, negative five. Seven, negative five, seven. So all my rates of change are negative five over seven, or something that reduces to negative five over seven. So everything is good to go there. All right. Um, so that would be a linear equation. Now, this second one here, this one, this one's going to be nonlinear. Now, the difference between linear and nonlinear, linear equations have an x, I'm sorry, linear equations have no exponent, nonlinear equations have an exponent. So, this is where it gets challenging because you don't see an exponent, but because this x is on the bottom, this is nonlinear. All right? And now I'm going to do one graph with you over here at the right hand side. Um, see pretty quickly that this graph changes direction. It doesn't travel on the same path the entire time. It has a curve, lots of things going on here. It is non-linear. All right, so now, go ahead. Uh, let me move this out right here. Uh, pause the video and see if you can figure out which one other ones are also linears and non-linears. So now I'll go ahead and do the seconds. So you can pause. And now, once you hit play again, you'll come back and I'll go through the answers with you. All right, so uh, this one is going to be linear. Uh, then we're looking for nonlinear functions here. So we've got an exponent, no exponent, no exponent. Here, there's a hidden exponent because three, that becomes 3x squared. So two of them there. Uh, this table here, so we got to subtract left, 23, so that would be 6, 4 over 6. So we got 4 over 6. That's my rate change because y over x, got 4 over 6, and 4 over 6. So same rate change every time. This one's going to be linear. I'm looking for a nonlinear function here on this group. So just to show you a nonlinear example down here at the bottom. 
2 and 4, that's 2. 17 minus 5 is 12. Well, eight minus, 10 minus 8 is 2 again, but this is definitely not 12. So that's why this one is nonlinear. The rest of them are all linears. This one right here, subtracting up, negative 4 over 2, 4, negative 4 again over 2, and negative 4 over 2. So everything's all the same there, so this one's also linear. So different rates of change means nonlinear. Same rate of change, linear. Uh, nonlinears have exponents, linears do not. So watch out for that hidden exponent, like on that one right there. Okay. Uh, last thing we want to do is we want to write equations and graphs. All right, we need three things. So we're writing y equals mx plus b. You need your m. You need your b. All right, so this graph on the left here, my m and my b. So my b is my y-intercept. All I have to do is look at it and see where does that thing begin at? Where does that hit the y-axis at? It's happening right there. So that's one, two, three, four. B is four. My slope, we need a couple good dots. So good dot right, right here. So I'm going to get my slope triangle up to right one, up two over one. I'm going to fill in my y equals 2x plus 4. All right, you're going to pause the video, see if you can write the equation for the second one, and then come back. All right, so let's do this one. M, B, my starting value is right here, so that's a positive 1. My slope, oh, good dot. Here's a good dot. Yeah, that looks like a good one. I got negative, so I'll go down 1, 2, 3. Over one, two, three, four, five. So negative three over five. There's my m. So I have m equals. I'm sorry. Y equals negative three over five x plus one. So there would be my equation. Y equals negative three fifths x plus one. So you need an m and you need a b. All right. So now this one, we have to figure out the rate of change and then find one that is looks like a greater slope and a larger y-intercept. So we need two things happening in this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our slope. All right, so rate of change is we subtract up. So I drew my arrow. I've got 14 minus 13, which is going to be 1. 16 minus 12 is going to be 4. So my slope would be 1 fourth. I'm looking for greater slope than 1 fourth. So Letter A is out because it's the same. I'm looking for greater. Uh, one half is greater, so that one's still in play. One fifth is not greater than one fourth, so that one's out. And the last one has one half, so that one's greater. Now, here's where I got to figure out my y intercept. So, how this one work is I've got an x value and a y value. So, I have 4 and 11. I'm going to use those two. If I plug in 4, it should give me 11, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four times my slope. So I'm gonna take this one fourth and I'm gonna plug it in here and I'm gonna do four times a fourth. Well, four times a fourth is one. It's supposed to be 11. So I gotta say, okay, how do I adjust this where I'm at one to get to 11? So the only way to get from one to 11 is to add 10. So I write my equation, y equals 1 fourth x plus 10. And right now, I've got my two pieces. I've got my slope, I've got my y-intercept. So I'm looking for greater slope, which I've already taken out two of them, and now I'm looking for a larger y-intercept. So my y-intercept is 10. So if I look at b, plus 6 is not bigger than 10, b's out. d has plus 14, that's my bigger one. All right. So, hope this helps, um, and that kind of wraps up functions and linear, nonlinear, and writing equations. Have a good day, everybody.